Fridays happen a lot, but we gon' have a ball, you can text your guys. Let me tell you what you really gotta do. You can count on us, we come through. We got everything you need, that's true. Are you ready for the traffic avenue? Let me tell you what you really gotta do. You can count on us, we come through. We got everything you need, that's true. An applause for the traffic avenue. Uh. Traffic avenue, the show for me. City News on 97.3 FM. Eyewitness News. Be there as it happens. City News. It's 17.30 GMT. This is Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTFM. I am Umaru Sanda Amadou. Tonight, I'm here with... Nashika Caesar. And coming up over the next 90 minutes. The most uh, shocking part of it is that we were never consulted. I mean, I, I heard some of the officers saying that, that some elders were sent to talk to us. I would be very happy to mention which elder was sent to me to talk to me. National Democratic Congress currently faced with a leadership crisis in Parliament as Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak tells pressmen he's still the minority chief whip and he is doing this with the support of a dozen or so MPs from the NDC side. Meanwhile, the new minority leader says all things are under control. That with the support of the entire minority caucus in Parliament, we shall succeed. Our first responsibility is to unite the caucus, and that will be number one on the agenda. We'll be hearing from Kezel Atufosin and other members of parliament on the NDC ticket who have been commenting on the leadership crisis of the opposition party. Also coming up, individual bondholders continue their advocacy against the government's debt exchange program. Tonight, they are meeting with Togbi Afede. We'll hear what exactly is transpiring in that meeting. And later on Eyewitness News, despite what seems to be a leaderless approach or a leaderless situation in the NDC in Parliament, it says it would fight the government on the COVID funds and how they have been utilized. Stay with 97.3 CTFM for more on this and many other stories on Eyewitness News. And in business... An economist, Dr. Patrick Isumin, says if the governance of the country's fiscal space is not given a second look, the debt exchange program will lose its significance. That's in 50 minutes with Nashika Caesar of the City Business Desk. Eyewitness News is live across Ghana on a number of affiliate stations, including in the western region on Adrinpa 100.7 FM in Takwa, Beach 105.5 FM in Takradi, Sky Power 93.5 FM, also in Takradi. If you go to the Bono region, we are on Greener, 95.9 FM in Sunyani. In the Ashanti region, on Focus, 94.3 FM in Kumasi. Orange, 107.9 FM, also in Kumasi. In the Volta region, we are on Revival, 99.3 FM in Tajavu. VOV Radio, 95.7 FM 
in Hokwe. In the northern region, in the northern region, we are on Radio Bimbila 91.9 FM. And uh, in the upper east region, we are on Quality 88.7 FM in Garo. We go to the upper west region, we are on Tungsung 97.3 FM in Wa and Jirapa FM 96.1. We are also live on Facebook. You can drop your comments after watching what we are bringing for you here from our studios. You can also send a message on WhatsApp 0549-986-996. Let's settle for details of our stories. Now, it appears to be a comedy of errors within the National Democratic Congress. On Tuesday, we cited a letter here at CTFM, which was addressed to the Speaker of Parliament, saying that the party has decided to remove its front bench, i.e. Haruna Idrisu, Muntaka Mohamed Mubarak, and Deputy James Klucha Veji. These three were swept away by the NDC to be replaced by new faces, Kesela Tufosin, uh, the Honorable Emmanuel Amakofibua, and the Honorable Member of Parliament for Adaklu. These three were supposed to replace the leaders who have been removed. Well, this did not go down well with the persons who have been removed, not only them, even other members of the House. Many MPs have been saying so many things in support and against, especially those against the new leadership. Today, the newly appointed minority leader, Dr. Kezela Tufosin, called journalists for an interaction, which interaction ended up being a press briefing where he did not take questions. But he said his first priority as leader was to unite the members of the minority caucus. Let's listen to him. First, let me say that I'm deeply honored and humbled to have been chosen to lead our gallant NDC minority caucus in Ghana's parliament. I wish to use this opportunity again to thank the leadership of our great NDC party who have placed their trust and confidence in me. I'm also deeply grateful to our colleagues, the rank and file of our great party, the NDC, and the people of Ghana for their profound support and solidarity. I have held fruitful and positive conversation, in fact, frank conversation, with my senior brother, the Honorable Haruna Idrisu. I commended him for his admirable leadership and stewardship when he was granted the opportunity by a great party to lead. It will be my duty to represent our collective, our collective goals in particular, with an unwavering dedication, and most importantly, with high integrity. I have no doubt that with the support of the entire minority caucus in parliament, we shall succeed. May the God Almighty guide us and bless us all. But let me also add that our first responsibility is to unite the caucus, and that will be number one on the agenda. Things of this nature happens, but obviously there's the need for us to show leadership, and we will do just that. Most importantly, I will focus the next month to tackle three things, I wish to first of all send a message to the MPP that the people of Ghana are calling on them to downsize their government, to reflect the mood of the country. You are asking people to forgo their coupons or interests, asking the ordinary Ghanaian to sacrifice payout. And so therefore, if His Excellency the President intends to reshuffle his government, let it be known that we in the NDC will not accept an attempt to increase the size of government. And if the current size of his ministers increase by one, that one person may not receive our cooperation. And in the end, we also wish to assure the people of Ghana that as part of our engagement, 
with the Finance Committee and the Health Committee, we have agreed to do public hearing on the audit of the COVID-19 expenditure, public hearing, beginning on the 7th of February, 2023. At that point, we will pay due diligence to the duties given to us as the people of Ghana. And then finally, finally, we will also embark on a roadshow where we will galvanize the people of Ghana and educate them on the meaning of what this economic crisis is going to take us through. But to conclude on this matter, I will appeal to the rank and file of our great NDC party to keep calm. Members of parliament are in good hands. We will work with them with due diligence. Obviously, obviously, we are not new in this house. I've been in this house for 14 years. I know the capabilities of all our colleagues. Some I met, some came to meet me. I have worked closely with most of our colleagues, and I can assure you that together we shall succeed. That's uh, the minority leader in parliament and MP for Ejuma Kwenyane, CM, Dr. Kizela, to force him. Now, that statement of his would, uh, as, well, would mean that he was getting the buy-in of many of the MPs. Earlier, we had heard that there was a petition coming up. Some 60 members or so of the NDC caucus had written to the neck or was petitioning the neck asking for a reversal of that decision that was announced by the party general secretary. A few hours on, a little after midday, uh, the embattled minority chief whip, MP for Aswasi, the Honorable Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak, called a press conference. Before I tell you about that, let me just say that Kesel Atufosin did this press conference in the company of uh, the Honorable Gavin Squami Agboja, who is the newly named minority whip, as well as the existing deputy whip, the Honorable uh, Ibrahim Ahmed, MP for Banda. These three were the ones who did the press conference, even though it was only the minority leader who spoke. When it came to the turn of uh, Muhammad Muntaka Mubarak to address the press, he was flanked by over a dozen members of parliament, including the Zebila member of parliament, Kletus Avoka. There was also the Wa Central member of parliament, the Honorable Abdul Rashid Pelpo. There was the Member of Parliament for Esutifi South, the Honorable Collins Dauda. The Honorable Edwin Nilante Vanderpoy, MP for Dododio Dio, was at that press conference. Dr. Dominic Ayine, former Deputy AG and MP for Bulga East, was also at that press conference, among a host of other members of Parliament. When he took the microphone, and I'm referring to Mohamed Mutanga Mubarak, this is what he said. We are equally concerned that the letters that were issued were not the decision of the party. Our party as NDC has about four decision-making uh, groups. First, the Congress, where all delegates meet to take decision. Second is the National Executive Committee, that's NEC. And then third is the Financial Executive Committee. It is when this group takes decision, then you get the general secretary and the principal officers implement. Then we also have the council of elders, even though our constitution says that they are advisory, sometimes periodically they also uh, give directions and then the party tries to implement. We are firm that I serve as on FEC, I serve on NEC, I go to council of elders as an observer, and I also on the political committee as an observer. Congress, all of us as members of parliament are members of Congress. And the minority leader is also on this, all these levels. At no such meeting was there any agenda to discuss this. So it is clear that it is a letter yes, written by the general secretary, but the decision may be just the decision of some few people in the party. And we believe that our party should sit up because article 55 of the 1992 constitution is very clear it says that everything that we do must 
follow democratic uh, principles. So we want to urge the general secretary, and the most uh, shocking part of it is that we were never consulted. I mean, I, I heard some of the officers saying that, that some elders were sent to talk to us. I would be very happy to mention which elder was sent to me to talk to me. Because nobody has spoke to me. And uh, without uh, casting any insulation and also uh, creating doubt on the capability of our colleagues, Honorable Atu Fosin, Honorable Kwame Agbuja, and Honorable Amako Fibua, these are our colleagues. I mean, we've been working very closely together, those of you who report from this house. And myself, uh, Honorable Abedi, and the leader himself, Honorable Aroedisu, we will have to be glad, grateful to this caucus. Any day they decide that, oh, we've had enough of you, maybe we want to change direction, we want to change energy, we want to change steam, we will be thankful for the opportunity given us. Because how were we put into office? I will just recap, in 2021, the party led by the then national chairman, Honorable uh, uh, Ampofo, and the general secretary came to our caucus meeting. They came and then names were sealed, so suggested names. And I remember very well, the first person they asked the general caucus was, do you want to retain your leadership or you want to change them? And there was a, a row, applause, that no, we want to maintain them. Even that, they said they wanted to be sure, because there were some other names that were also coming up. Its regional caucus was asked to go back and having the names that had come up, consider what the, the address, seal it in an envelope, and give it to the uh, National Party, which is exactly what happened. So it was taken to the political committee, it was summarized, and then there was another purpose meeting to announce the decision from the various 16 regional purposes. I want to say that this is consultation. And this is the caucus electing its leaders. I'm sorry to say that you have youth organizers in our party, they meet to elect their leaders. Women organizers meet to elect their leaders. And it is shocking for parliamentarians to be told that leaders are choosing for them. I have said this was my third term in the leadership. There was not a single time that I was losing to that I've been appointed as so so and so to serve in any capacity in parliament. And we know the natural justice, I mean, and the laws of our country. If you cannot write a letter to appoint, how can we write a letter to disappoint? We don't want this controversy at this time or a letter to, dis to dismiss. Yes, I want to also remind the, some of the officers about our 1992 constitution, Article 296, where when discretion is given you, that discussion, how it should be used, so how it should be exercised. So we don't want to create enmity among us unnecessarily, but we believe that the right process should be done. And believe me, if the right process is done, you come to the caucus, the regional caucus will resolve that they want to change their leaders or they want to change some of the positions. We will be very happy and we will thank them for the, uh, the opportunity to serve. Because the very day that some of us uh, were appointed to leaders, we knew the very day that you have to exit for others to come because we took over from others. So there's no doubt about that. Our plea is that when this petition gets to the Council of Elders, we hope that they will help fast track a reconciliation and a meeting that will help us resolve all this before Parliament resumes so that we don't have to saddle ourselves with this controversy when MPP is really messing up completely, there are so many issues that we need to uh, be focusing, which this is not a time for us to be focusing in the internal division among us. And I don't think that's healthy for us at all. There's nothing before the caucus. I mean, you know, it's the caucus that has to, uh, with the consultation of the party, have its leaders. And there's nothing before the, 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 the caucus. And then, with respect to uh, claims that there was some fruitful discussion with Honorable Harun Edison, yeah, it's not here, but he gave a, a detailed briefing at the caucus meeting. And without uh, wanting to 
creates problems because our intention is not to create a banter. But I can tell you that there was nothing fruitful <laughs> about discussing with one of our leaders. He facilitated everything, what they did and what he advised them to do, which they did not even do at the caucus meeting. So it's not something that even is private. That's the Honorable Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak, he's a Swasi member of parliament. Uh, he was, was chief whip of the NDC and to, on Tuesday when we saw that letter from General Secretary Fifi Fiavi Kwiti uh, saying that there was a decision to reshuffle the leadership. Now, interestingly, after the Atuforsin press conference at Parliament House, he and others moved to the NDC headquarters in Adabraka to have a meeting with the national leadership. After that meeting, um, the General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Fiavi Kwiti, made a statement. Listen. Minority uh, caucus has called on us today uh, to have uh, a conversation with us regarding uh, the way forward uh, because the minority group in parliament represents a very important wing of the party. Uh, we appreciate that uh, the work ahead is going to require a lot of input coming from them. And of course, they are, uh, on behalf of uh, the National Democratic Congress, uh, we, we want to use this opportunity to extend our gratitude to the millions of our followers all over this country for uh, the continued show of faith and support uh, to the leadership of the party. Uh, we are here because of them. Uh, we've been elected uh, uh, by them and to work on their behalf. Uh, we are heartened and glad and uh, by the fact that uh, they continue to stand firmly behind us as leaders. Uh, and they are fully conscious of the fact that we are here for just one thing, to do everything we can to ensure that this political party remains a solid vehicle to be able to deliver its mandate of uh, ensuring that we have a great nation, a great and strong nation. And that's exactly what it is that we are working towards. Um, the new leadership of our minority uh, caucus has called on us today uh, to have uh, a conversation with us regarding uh, the way forward, uh, because the minority group in parliament represents a very important wing of the party. Uh, we appreciate that uh, the work ahead is going to require a lot of input coming from them. And of course, they understand that as, an, as a wing of the party, they need to work very closely with their uh, leadership of the party to ensure that we can deliver the aspirations of our people and especially being able to do what Ghana requires of us, which is to work towards uh, taking out of power the most abysmal, the most incompetent, the most corrupt government in the history of our country. And so we've had a beautiful conversation with them. Uh, we've also signaled to them that uh, we, in early next week, uh, on Tuesday, we'll be having a broader conversation with the caucus as a whole. Uh, and uh, that conversation is one that uh, would uh, basically confirm the decisions that have been taken in terms of explaining uh, the way forward I mean, for us as a party and the best way to be able to make sure we deliver the mandate uh, that has been given to us, uh, a mandate that will ensure uh, uh, the well-being of the people of Ghana come election uh, 2024. So that's General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Fiavi Kwete. Now, you do know that um, there have been issues of a petition that has been signed and uh, been sent to the NEC, the National Executive Committee or NEC of the party. We have cited that now. As of last night, uh, let me read for you what the petition said. And it said, we, the undersigned NDC members of parliament, have taken note of a letter signed by our party General Secretary, Fifi Kwete dated 23rd January 2023, and addressed to the Speaker of Parliament. The letter purportedly makes changes to the leadership of our caucus. With all due respect to the leadership of our party at all levels, we wish to request that they patiently broaden and deepen consultations on the subject again because we have doubts about how thorough the process was. 
we are concerned that this critical decision didn't seem to have taken into consideration the unity of purpose and focus of our caucus, and this requires the caucus requires to deal with the electoral commission's intentions to introduce a new CI, the government's IMF negotiations, and its intended uh, reintroduction of the Japan deal before the House. We also think this decision would have unintended consequences as we go into our parliamentary primaries. Therefore, in the light of the party's National Executive Committee's decision at this last meeting to extend the mandate of all directors to the end of May 2023, we respectfully request that to the extent to all we ex we respectfully request that to extend to all levels of leadership of the party, including Parliament. Until then, without disregarding the letter signed by the General Secretary of our party and without malice towards our colleagues proposed as new leaders, we the undersigned NDC members of Parliament resolve to stand by our current leadership until the process of consultation is satisfactory to all consent. The list of MPs who are signing this has been attached, and let me read that for you. It is up to 73. Number one, Al Hassan Saibu Suhini, Dr. Kwabna Donko, Dominic Akutringa Ayini, Ernest Nogbe, Kwabna Minta Akando, Eric Opoku, Yusuf Suleiman, Samuel George, Samson Ahin, Ibrahim Mohamed Murtala, Edward Bauer, A.B.A. Fuseini, Abednego Bandim, Collins Dauda, Thomas Nyako Ampim, Edwin Nilante Van der Poy, Isaac Adongo, Linda Obiniwa Akwele Oklu, Haruna Seidu, Teddy Safori Adi, Dan Latif, Zuera Ibrahima, Clement Abbas Apak, Goffred Seidu Joso, Emmanuel Bedra, Bukari Nikpe Joseph, Andrew Dari Chiwiti, Hamza Adam, Abdullah Jacob Idris, Dawuni Abukari, Francis Xavier Sosu, Samson Tongobu Chiragia, James Agalga, Oklete Telabi, Yusuf Jaja, Solomon Kuyong, Baba Seidu Isifu, Yao Gomado, Mohamed Adam Suparu, Bid Zidin, Daniel Salah Wakpali, Sebastian Sandare, Mohamed Bawa Brahma, Joseph Kuma, Lydia Akanvariba, Kletus Dapla, Alazuga Akuka, Ben Aiku, Joseph Tete, Isaac Ashai Odamtin, Nasar Mohamed Turi, Alfred Oku Vanderpoy, Thomas Dalu, Suma Anthony, Sanja Nanja, Adams Abdul Salam, B.T. Baba, Dominic Napare, Oscar Ofori Labi, Kletus Avoka, Theresa Awuni, Mohamed Ramadan, Mahama Ayariga, Rashid Pelpo, John Jinapo, Kojo Abuaji, Peter Tobu, Dr. Zaneto Ajiman Rollins, Dr. Mark Ket Nawani, and Christian Otute. So 73 MPs signed that petition out of 137 MPs in Parliament, and that is very interesting. 137 MPs minus 73, that gives you 64, which means that the party that has, or the group that has petitioned the NEC asking for uh, the decision to be arrested is more than the group that has not. And so if you've heard the name of your MP there, it means it's one of the many MPs who are asking for the NDC to reverse its decision. If you do not hear the name of your MP, it means your MP is either abstaining or is on the side of Kesela to force him. That's as simple as it can get. And we are told that this list is growing. And indeed, at the press conference today, we saw people who were supporting the Honorable Muntaka Mubarak at that press conference. I've listed the names for you already. Now, while all of this is happening, Muntaka Mubarak has spoken. We have not heard from James Klucher Aveji. However, uh, the is a publication circulating suggesting that Harun Idrisu has spoken. He has issued a statement, which is a disclaimer, and he says, my attention has been drawn to information circulating on social media, particularly on Facebook and Twitter, purporting to be emanating from me and using my image to issue series of statements in my name. For the record, I wish to state that 
the said Facebook and Twitter accounts do not belong to me and that I have never owned a Facebook or Twitter account, neither have I caused any such account to be opened and operated in my name. Indeed, I have never been on social media. I have never had or caused to be opened and operated in my name and any form of social media account. The said accounts purported to be in my name are therefore fake and so are the posts. I therefore entreat the general public, particularly the rank and file of our great NDC party, to ignore the posts with the contempt they deserve. The creation of the accounts and the posts therein are mere attempts by detractors to sow seeds of discontent within the hierarchy of the party and to smear my person, but they shall def definitely fail. I have no doubt the truth will always prevail. So that's a statement issued by Haruna Idris to Tamale South MP and um, maybe to be fair to describe him as a former minority leader if uh, Fifi Kwiti's letter is to be considered above what the other persons are saying. This is Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTF and we have more on that when we come back. Please stay. Eyewitness News. Be there as it happens. For ball from around the world. Philly Philly on HD Plus from 17 January 2023. Score HD is available only on HD Plus channel. There's something special happening at Heritage Christian College. Their bustling campus is right in the heart of Amasaman, just behind the Olympic Stadium. And it will amaze you what they are doing there. Heritage Christian College is churning out academic excellence with their comprehensive range of degrees, including Bachelor of Business Administration programs, IT, and theology. Don't forget to ask about their professional programs and short courses. What makes Heritage special? Heritage Christian College takes the academic experience further than ever with one laptop per student, flexible fee payment, entrepreneurial training with financial support, all delivered by a caring faculty working to develop your character and your intellect. Admissions are in progress, so call today on 54 731 and get accepted. For more information, go to hcuc.edu.gh. Heritage Christian College, a university educating compassionate entrepreneurs entrepreneurial leaders one gonna one gonna one gonna pip, pip. just one gonna one gonna one gonna I'll make, make you give you correct shock of Zoba. I'll make a do video concept then take the Gaussian P for the NG show you. Hey, Every morning you the tear calls the brows. Actually, hey. something they did. Hey, tell God, the way Tom make hot. I go best one if you know. If it be you where you get Vodafone one Ghana promo them up. 20 minutes talk time to call all networks where you start get data and quiet one gig from 5 a.m. to 11 59 a.m. Bye. And can you go do pass me self and you dial star five? Three zero hash. Make we enjoy. You can please subscribe as many times as you want. Yes, plantation. Yo, sweet Amma. Take this by Vodafone One Ghana Battle. Moku vibe plus video calls and taste. You catch the vibe. Early morning, 5 a.m. sharp. Vodafone, further together. Let your voice be heard on Eyewitness News on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag Eyewitness News. Hey, welcome back to Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTFM. We are broadcasting from Adabraka in Accra. If you're listening to this broadcast and uh, you want to know what exactly the situation with the NDC in Parliament is, well, I can say to you that it appears to be having two leaders. Uh, there's one group of leaders that was supposed to have been removed by the party on Tuesday. That group of leaders had been quiet until this afternoon when Minority Chief Whip at the time, or well, former MP Faswasi Muntaka Mubarak, addressed a press conference and said, well, what happened was not proper in terms of due process. And then before then, a few hours earlier, around 8 or 9, Kesela Tufosin, the man who's been named as the new leader, called the press conference and also said he was working towards unity and assured that things were going to calm down. Now, when the first story came up on Tuesday, I called up a number of MPs from the Chamber of Parliament on the NDC side to speak to. One of them is a leading member, a senior member, if you like, on the NDC side. He's been in Parliament for many years. He was once a leader of the caucus 
as a majority side. He spoke to us and said he thought that there should have been consultations. Today, he joined Honorable Muntaka Mubarak to give or do that press conference. His name is Kletus Apulavoka. He's MP for Zebila. He's joining us on the line. Honorable, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you, Omaru. So there were two press conferences today, one by Kesela Tofosin, and it will be fair to say that he and his friends, and Muntaka Mubarak, he too, and his friends, we found you in the meeting with the second person. Does it mean the lines have been drawn and it is a fight between Aswasi and Ejuma Kwenya No, Maru, the, the battle lines have not been drawn. And we will not allow it to be generated into that, uh, that stage. Uh, the fact is that about 40, about 70 MPs have signed uh, a memo to the uh, Council of Elders and National Executive asking them to suspend the Kenyan reshuffle exercise and then do proper engagement so that after the parliamentary primaries and then the flag bearer primaries, then after, the, after those events, in line with the national executive decision that they decided recently that all appointees in the various positions and uh, appointees and then officers of the party in the various positions remain in post or at post until the parliamentary and presidential flag bearer elections are done sometime in the May. So we are saying that uh, hold on until those elections are done, and then there is a proper stakeholder consultation before we can uh, 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 reshuffle if we need be. Uh, we also observe that um, uh, the process is that the letter was written to the speaker. The uh, parliament is on recess now. We are not sitting. We are on break. And therefore, when the speaker received the letter, uh, there is no communication to the, the MPs. The practice is that when the speaker receives co correspondence while we are sitting, the first thing in the morning when we engage is that you read the correspondence from the office of the president, office of any of the parties, etc., to us. And then the, when we are seized with those facts, then we will comply accordingly. But as of now, um, the, the parliament is not sitting. It's the letter is a letter of reading to the speaker. Uh, the speaker has not read the letter to anybody because we are not sitting. And therefore, it is mere... Uh, social media and newspaper information that we are gathering. And I don't think that uh, at the level of our democratic practice now, we should depend on what is happening in the newspapers and then the, in social media and take action on that. Uh, that, will, that, will, that will be inappropriate. So we are saying that let's be patient. After all, on the 7th of February, Parliament will be resuming or reopening. And then on that day, when the speaker reads the, uh, the letter to us, uh, uh, purportedly coming from the leadership of the party, then we advise ourselves on what to do. And uh, But currently we are saying that uh, once there have been no consultation, we have not uh, properly been apprised of the, the, the reshuffle uh, officially, and then there are other stakeholders that are not aware. It is prudent to suspend it until uh, further notice when we meet. So it's not that we have two leaders as such. We still think that uh, now that we have not been properly seized with the notice of change of the officers. Then the, those officers, Harun and Kusin, must still be in office until such time they were officially informed. This is what we are saying. All right. So to understand you clearly, um, if the speaker comes on Tuesday 7th February and uh, reads this communication to the House, how is your reaction going to be like? Would you say that very well, thank you, uh, please, there should be change of guards, Haruna and co move back, and uh, Ato Fosin and others move forward. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking if this can happen, whether or not you have a meeting prior with, uh, of, before 7th February. Sorry. Well, Umaru, I don't want to speculate, but uh, suffice it to say, however, that uh, we have uh, structures in the party that deal with matters of this nature. Uh, before a critical issue of reshuffle should take place, at least the National Executive Committee will have met to discuss the issue. The National Executive Committee will have met to discuss the issue, and they will have bounced it on the Council of Elders uh, on what uh, they are planning to do. And they will have come to Parliament to engage the caucus that uh, we are changing your leadership in the interest uh, of the party and the country as a whole. These processes did not go through this, uh, this, 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 this channel of communication. And that is why we are stuck, like, like we find ourselves. 
So in between today and then the 7th of February, before we open, these uh, communications are, these channels are, are addressed. If, if, they fail, if they fail to be addressed, what's going to happen? I don't know what is going to happen. The caucus will they discuss among themselves. The 136 MPs will discuss among themselves and find a way forward. We don't want to rock the boat. I think that we respect our party leadership. And we know that we voted them about two, a month, two months ago in December to put them in peace. So we respect them. But we, they, we are talking about a matter of principle, that the right thing must be done, the procedure must be followed. The, the party has insisted that the right thing has been done, and that right thing is that it has decided who should lead the caucus in the chamber. That sounds as final as it can. Well, yeah, that is what the, we are really hearing in the, in the public. But I'm saying that the letter has not been officially communicated to us to be able to respect it as such. It is only when we are sitting and the speaker is on the chair, then he can then communicate this, that there is a letter from the, 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 the office of the NDC changing the leadership of the party, and that we should take note and comply. That has not yet been done. Do you not think that you are deepening the cracks further then by not recognizing the person. And, and I'm saying that even though the party may not have not spoken to you officially, you have seen the communication, unless you suspect that Fifi Kwete's signature has been forged, which he has actually come out to say it was not, then you should respect your party's decision that this is a leader. And when that leader called the press conference today, you could have gone there to support him. You did not. You waited a few hours on to come and support someone else who you can quote and unquote, describe as deposed. That means that you are defying the party's decision, doesn't it? And the party can take action against you and others. <laughs> Umaro, that is, that is not the case. Look at the word you use, deposed. I mean, uh, this is a part-time internal matter. And then uh, if you use uh, words like uh, coup or deposed and the rest of them, uh, it doesn't work well for party uh, unity and party organization. Uh, I, oh, but I depose, uh, depose is an English word which simply means remove from <laughs> office suddenly. If the I, NDC decides to do that, I have every right to use the word to describe it. Well, that is true, but, but when the party wrote the letter to the speaker and then we have read it in social media, they say that it's a reshuffle. You know, a reshuffle is not a coup or it's not a, a, they are not deposing. A, well, I mean, it's semantics if I put it that way. But I'm saying that, look, let's do the right thing. We are deepening democracy. We have been practicing this democracy since 1992 under the fourth Republican Constitution. What, 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 if we started something in 92 or 93, and that is not helping us in our democratic dispensation, we should be improving it all the time. I remember in 2001, 2001, when we came back to Parliament in January, what the national executive came to tell us about the issue is that they had consulted the regional caucuses, I mean, the regional executives, and then they have proposed some names. So they gave us the name and said that we should also uh, agree or disagree. And we said that we had adopted that, we had agreed. And they said that was not enough. They gave an envelope for every regional caucus to go and they would vote to confirm this nomination. And we did. And that is how Mubarak and I mean, how do I, are in office today. If we get this in 2001, two years later, then we just sit down and they come and read the letter to you that your leadership has been removed. I, I think that it's not healthy. Very well. We are trying to, we are, we are talking about a healthy way of doing the things. Don't forget that we are in the middle of, 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 uh, of, the, of, the, say, of the season. We, we have two years to go for elections, if not less than that even. So we should not do anything that will rock the boat. We should okay. focus on issues now that will make our governors, they can help people convince them and get elections in 2024. Very well. divide our ranks. Very well. so we are talking about you know, consultation, consensus building, and the moving together forward. Okay. Thank you. But before you go, on Tuesday when I spoke yes. to you, exactly. uh, you yes, on, on Tuesday when I spoke to you, uh, Honorable, can you hear me? Yes, yes. On, on Tuesday when I spoke to you, you agree. When I spoke to you on Tuesday, um, you made some statements in relation to your new leadership, uh, Kisela mm -hmm. Tufosin et al., and you said something in the in the in the lines that sound like this is not the time to make non entities entities. That publication has gone viral, and uh, many people have been condemning you for using such words on your colleague. Two days on, is there a reflection on this, and is there a correction you want to make, or you still stand by that position? 
You recall, uh, my attention was drawn to it by a colleague about yesterday in the evening. And then they, this morning I talked to you, I called you. And then the, I told you how, my, my, how deficient I am in social media and then, or in IT. And then the, you said you would send me the audio to read. I haven't read it yet. But I thought I was answering a question. I thought you said that they are bringing um, uh, some other people to um, elevate some others. And I said that this is not the time to drop somebody and elevate some other person. I thought that was the process in which I was answering. I will be the last. I will be the last to derogate, make those derogatory remarks about my colleagues in Parliament, and particularly the three people concerned. I have known uh, Dr. Atu Paulson for, Paulson for several years now. And when I was the majority leader, he was in Parliament, and uh, that was the chief Parliament. I was the leader of the House. Then the uh, civil parliament, when I was back in the house there, was deputy minister of finance. And he had been the ranking member for the past uh, uh, six years or seven years. So he, he has acquitted himself relatively. Uh, we have been always, we have always admired him on the floor and even at the committee meetings and then in a caucus meetings. Similarly, Padme uh, Boja uh, is the same. And then Bua, Bua is my, uh, my good friend. And then the, and then the, he was Minister for Energy. I used to go to him. In fact, all of them, I visited them and we exchanged things. So I'll be the last to say that. If I said that it was an error, maybe a slip of tongue, but I was saying that this is not the time to drop somebody and elevate another fellow. This is what I tried to say or to, to convey. If, they, if in the process I said something different, I must, I must apologize and I'm very sorry. Very well. I cannot derogate any of my colleagues because they are competent. What we are fighting now, what we are talking about now, it's not about competence of Aruna and Co. or the new people that we are talking about. They, they are all very good and, and resourceful MP. We work together, we know their resourcefulness, we know their competence, their integrity. That we are talking about principle and procedure. Thank That's you. All. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us, sir. Thank you very much. Now, the Honorable Kletus Avoka, he's MP for Zebila, speaking to us there. Uh, now, the group that has um, a two forcing leading it has been having series of meetings. There was a meeting at the NDC headquarters in Adabraka. After that, the team also went to meet the Speaker of Parliament, Aban Sumana Kingsford Bagbin, in his residence at Oyarifa. Now, when they finished that meeting, the Honorable Yimano Amakofibua, who is the new Deputy Minority Leader, spoke to journalists. Let's listen to him. I have to say that we were warmly received. We also have benefited from his wise counsel. So we are very encouraged by it. And we thank him for that. Thank you very much. What was his message to you? Well, you know, our priority right now is to make sure that we unite our caucus. That's our number one priority. And that is so important to us. Of course, you cannot lead when you are crowd, your, your, your people are not united. And that's our singular focus. And we are confident we will do that. The speaker is a member of your party. Does he recognize you as leader? It's OK. <laughs> so that answer, from, uh, that answer to the question by Kamala Kuluchi of TV3 was not answered whether or not the speaker recognizes them. But the issue is that um, they have gone to have a conversation with the speaker after that they spoke to journalists. And that's Imano Ama Kofibua, MP for Elembele, who was speaking there to journalists after meeting with the Speaker of Parliament. This is Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTV. Ayukwe Okain is actually a man uh, in Parliament. Uh, he is the one who's been following this story. Ayukwe, it's been a long, busy day for you, uh, moving from Parliament through NDC headquarters and now at Oyarifa. Uh, I'm guessing the Speaker himself did not speak to the media. Exactly the case. So this was a closed-door meeting between the new leadership of the Minority Caucus in Parliament and the Speaker at his residence at Oyarifa in the Greater Accra region. So after the closed-door meeting that took almost uh, an hour, uh, we had the Deputy Minority Leader, Emmanuel Makufipua, and then Kevin Squamia Goja, as well as Dr. Kessia Latifosin, coming out to address the media on what transpired. And he told us that, indeed, the discussion was geared towards ensuring that uh, the caucus is united. That is the key focus for now. Of course, you cannot lead 
uh, a caucus that is divided. So their key focus now is to focus on ensuring unity among members of the caucus. All right. Now, the Deputy Chief uh, Whip, um, Ahmed Ibrahim, was at the press conference in the morning. Did he follow or was he, again, part of the group that went to see the speaker? Yes, he was part of them. What about his colleague, Doyo Ganza? He was also part. Which other MPs, if you could mention, or how many other MPs went with the, with the, with the leadership, the new leadership, to meet the speaker? So, so these were five MPs, that's the leaders. So we had the minority leader, Dr. Tessia Latoforsen, as well as the deputy, uh, Emmanuel Amakopi, where we have the minority now, the minority uh, group, also there, as well as the deputy, Ahmed Ibrahim, and then... Okay, so I mean, outside, outside that group of five, other MPs did not go with them? No other, yes. How about National Party executives? No, the National Party executives were not there. Very well. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That's Ayuko Okain. Uh, Emmanuel Ayuko Okain is our correspondent. In Parliament. This is Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTFM. We have more uh, coming your way. Please stay with us. Eyewitness News. Be there as it happens. Oh, Jack. Nah. Where are you in a hurry to? Child, I'm going to Imperial to do my car insurance. Ah. What's happening there? Because Info and Yaba also told me they're going there this morning for their car insurance. Ah, Masa, you have it heard. Now, the Imperial is the name in insurance in Ghana here. Really? Sure. Imperial generally is saying, come insure your vehicle with them at any of their branches or agents or even online from now till the end of March 2023 mm -hmm. and get yourself handsome, handsome rewards. Fuel coupons, mm -hmm. special souvenirs, gift vouchers, and many, many more. Hey. And here's the catch. During this reward period, eh, mm -hmm. you will also get a free one-year life insurance cover in addition to your motor insurance. Insurance cover. What the wow? <laughs> so that include with the taxi drivers and the e-taxis. Hey, everybody qualifies so. Just come insure your car and you are done. Hey. Call 0302-788-955 for further details. T C supply. Imperial General Assurance. Solid protection. <laughs> ah, you know you papa see that. And it's Ricky Tika. Hey, Papa! Bobo. Papa! Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Ah, Bobo, so how your engine now? It is half man, half amazing. Thanks to cause and you can feel better energy. Can't touch this. Tell you guys, so Sancho's engine just died like that? Yes, so somebody managed to convince him that there is a better engine oil than quartz. And he switched. Ah, Sancho Panza now, which engine oil can be better than Quartz? No other, my guy. Quartz with its age resistant technology, it keeps your engine younger, for longer. Yoga. Yoga. <laughs> now, you know, have you guys seen the new bottle design? It's superb. Quartz 9000 from Total Energy's Day improves fuel efficiency. Why do you think Mr. Mane and Logo Song have taken the Quartz Nation movement World Cup like that? Mr. Mane, hey, sorry, sorry. Mr. Mane, no Mane. Hey, Mane. Quartz. Keep your engine younger. For longer. One gunner, one gunner, one gunner pit. One gunner, one gunner. For the phone, one gunner pit. No, bro, I beg, make you give me correct shock of Zoba. Or make a do video concept, then take the Gaussian P for the engine show you. Hey, yawa, umache. Every morning in the tear course, they browse. Hey, Charlie, something they did. Hey, tell God, the way Tom make hot. I grow best so I know if you have no po. If it be you where you get the Vodafone one Ghana promo the mark. 20 minutes talk time to call all networks where you start get data and quiet one gig from 5 a.m. to 11.59 a.m. Bye. How can you go do pass me self, Anka? You dial star 530 hash. Make we enjoy. You go fit subscribe as many times as you want. Yeah. Yo, sweet Amma, take this by Vodafone One Ghana Bando. Moku vibe plus video calls and taste. You catch the vibe. Early morning, 5 a.m. sharp. Vodafone, further together. Let your voice be heard on Eyewitness News on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag Eyewitness News. Get the details. Every significant financial transaction, every market movement, and all the policies that affect your business. City Business News. Be informed. Time now for City Business News on Eyewitness News, powered by citybusinessnews.com.
I am Nashika Caesar. Let's settle for the details. An economist, Dr. Patrick Isumin, says if the governance of the country's fiscal space is not given a second look, the debt exchange program will lose its significance. This comes as government is restructuring its debt as part of efforts to secure an international monetary fund. Already, it has received major opposition from various groups with some threatening legal action to be exempted from the haircuts. Speaking during the public forum on Ghana's debt exchange program, organized by the Economic Governance Platform, Dr. Isumin stressed the need for financial discipline to improve the country's position. If you look at some of the things we are talking about, so if you look at some of the things that have come out of uh, the IE, some of the things that have come out of the Individual Bond uh, Holders Forum, some of the things that are going to be in the current program we are discussing, they were, a lot of them were in the last program. The as the issue about exemptions that is going to be discussed widely again, they were there. The issues about private uh, uh, property taxes were there. A lot of... So we did do the Fiscal Responsibility Act. But, you know, we've seen that when the laws are being passed, it appears that because the parliamentarians know that they are the ones who eventually run the government, it appears that there's a deliberate attempt to create a space. That was economist Dr. Patrick Isumin. Meanwhile, speaking at the same event, Director of Research at the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, Dr. John Kwache, agrees and believes the government must consider savings that can be made by reviewing its fiscal strategy in order to ensure fair burden sharing. Unfortunately, we, we don't have enough information on the maturities and the coupon rates to be able to compute that. So we said, even if we don't have it, let's go to the fiscal consolidation side mm -hmm. and see how much savings we can make. And I, I think that's the paper that you think you said uh, you've gone through it. You know? So maybe as we get on, I'll provide some more details on what kind of fiscal consolidation, expenditure, and revenue measures. And, and indicate how much savings we could make from there. Then with, with that in hand, we can say that then you can mitigate, you know, the, the restructuring. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you can use it to mitigate it. You, you should do both. Otherwise, you are asking the bondholders to, to do too much, to bear the, the entire brunt of this. And when the fiscal consolidation should also be doing that. And IMF should help to do that, to achieve this. You know that even the debt restructuring, they are still saying that it's a, it's a sovereign decision. <laughs> oh, that's what the IMF yeah. said. They say it's a sovereign decision. So it's at, it's at your discretion. It's up to us. It's up to us. That was the Director of Research at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Dr. John Kwachi. Moving on, the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, has highlighted the need for more investment in crucial infrastructure by the African government and businesses to facilitate trade under the African Continental Free Trade Area. This, he notes, will help ensure continued productivity and sustainable economic growth on the continent. Speaking at the maiden edition of the Africa Prosperity Dialogues, dubbed Quo Summit 2023, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia also called on African governments to implement concrete actions to ensure that Africa achieves the needed industrialization. Like the vision of our forebears, the African continental free trade area has set the stage for Africa's industrialization drive. But it will take concrete, strategic actions by governments and businesses on the continent, the right mix of policies, a greater sense of purpose for more robust intra-African trade to happen, to support economic diversification and the much-needed industrialization of the continent. To bring about the transformation we need, I propose three broad aims that we need to prioritize. There is the need for smart investments in critical infrastructure. As a continent, we need to produce and trade our way out of poverty and underdevelopment. And we cannot do that without investing in smart infrastructure across the continent. While the last decades have seen some positive investments, 
there is the need for additional resources to finance the arteries for trade, which include the physical infrastructure such as roads, rail, and energy, digital infrastructure such as data centers to facilitate the digital transformation. That was the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia there. Chairman of the Board of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Alex Dade, advocated the need for African government to incentivize private sector players to invest abroad in developed markets. We are determined to change. We are, however, determined to change the strategy and focus away from only exporting these abundant natural resources and low-value manufactured products. We believe that African, the African private sector must be incentivized to invest abroad in developed markets and repatriate profits back home, like our foreign competitors do. This is one of the surest ways to shore up our local currency. That was the chairman of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Alex Daddy. Now, the Bank of Ghana, BOG, is announcing that its regulatory sandbox is open from February 13, 2023 to March 14, 2023 to admit the first batch of participants. The BOG stated that the regulatory sandbox will support innovations of specialized deposit-taking institutions and payment service providers, non-bank financial institutions, among others. Here excerpts of a statement by the central bank. The Bank of Ghana announces for the information of banks, specialized deposit-taking institutions, payment service providers, non-bank financial institutions, and aspiring fintech startups and all innovators that its regulatory sandbox is open from 13th February 2023 to 14th March 2023 to admit the first cohort of participants. Broadly, the regulatory sandbox will support innovations in any of the following areas. 1. Digital business models not currently covered explicitly or implicitly under any regulation. 2. New and immature digital financial service technology. And 3. Innovative and disruptive digital financial service products that have the potential of addressing a present financial inclusion challenge. The first cohort window, however, will largely accept innovations from among the following priority areas. Payment, remittances, crowdfunding and micro-lending. Interested entities should submit a complete application in the prescribed form. Prospective participants will be informed of the outcome of the application within 21 working days after the closure of the application window on 14th March 2023. Those were excerpts of a statement from the Bank of Ghana. Finally, the e-commerce industry has been ranked the best sector in the customer services in the country for 2022. The sector recorded a score of 85%, a significant increase from 2021. The transportation and hospitality industry came second and third, respectively. This was disclosed by the president of the Institute of Customer Service Professionals, Yvonne Ohui McCarthy, who urged organizations to be innovative in service delivery. I always say that we have to look at a triangular um, solution. So we're looking at the people at the top. We have to have a nationalistic approach to our customer service problems. We have to have things like regulators, we have to have government sitting in and also pushing the agenda of customer service. And then we have to look at the organizations. They have to employ the right people, train people properly, treat people well, and then individuals also have to understand they have a part to play, um, especially if you're an employee or a staff of an organization and you're serving, you also have to put in your best to serve. So it's not just a one solution for all. Every single person Person has a part to play and it will take the government, it will take organizations and it will take us as individuals to help solve the Ghana customer service issue. I can comfortably say that the e-commerce sector has moved the score up. The e-commerce sector last year was last but one. This year they find themselves at the top and they have, if you look at what they scored last year and what they scored this year, it's a 17.8 percent change and so that tells you they've actually helped in driving the change that we're seeing today. 
That was the president of the Institute of Customer Service Professionals, Yvonne Ohui McCarthy Day. And that's all for City Business News on Eyewitness News, powered by citybusinessnews.com. I am Nashika Caesar. Up next is Point Blank. Let your voice be heard on Eyewitness News on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag Eyewitness News. My man, I heard there's a new app on the streets that does it all for you. Ah, really? <laughs> How is that possible? Charlie, I also could not believe you too. But I downloaded the app and I'm telling you, I was able to chat with my friends, make video calls and... Well, we know of many apps that can do that. Oh, let me finish that. I was also able to listen to the latest songs, play games and read the latest post news. <laughs> for real? Yeah, and I can send and receive money from the app. <laughs> Amazing, no? What's the name of this app? It's called Ayoba. Ayoba? Yeah, Ayoba. Get Ayoba, your all-in-one app that lets you chat, call, share, play, pay, and listen to music all in one app for everyone. Enjoy Ayoba with MTN and download the Ayoba app today, everywhere you go. For Pepsodent, smiles are one of the most important things we have. The problem is, globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. Pepsodent, with maximum cavity protection, helps to prevent the formation of cavities. Pepsodent, because every smile matters. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Good night, Football from around the world. Feeling feeling on HD Plus from 17 January 2023. Score HD is available only on HD Plus Channel 151. Let your voice be heard on Eyewitness News on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city973, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag Eyewitness News. Be there as it happens.